cervical cancer is the topic and cervical cancer most often is a squamous cell carcinoma and about 99 percent of the time it's due to human papillomavirus HPV although a very small percentage of cases have also been due to herpes virus in terms of risk factors um, promiscuity is really a big one because HPV is sexually transmitted from person to person and also if a person has had their first intercourse at a younger age that is also considered a risk factor another risk factor for developing cervical cancer is smoking so keep those in mind as they will be mentioned on a clinical vignette in terms of the pathology cervical cancer is described as CIN which is uh, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and CIN has three grades there's grade one two and three and grade one is referred to as mild cervical dysplasia and grades two and three are referred to as moderate cervical dysplasia and severe cervical dysplasia. In terms of symptoms of cervical cancer, not much really to say since most are asymptomatic, um, but in advanced cases you will get irregular vaginal bleeding, which is a very serious uh, sign. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of cervical cancer is actually a very important aspect uh, because there is a established screening test known as a pap smear and the pap smear detects uh, abnormalities in cervical cells even before it becomes cancerous so this is a great way of detecting something in a very early stage if you do the pap smear and indeed the cells are abnormal then you would proceed to a colposcopy and you would do a biopsy of course as well and that will definitely give you some very important diagnostic information if you indeed have cervical cancer then it's important to do staging to see if the cancer has spread and that is done with the CT or MRI of the abdomen and pelvis in terms of treatment treatment of cervical cancer if it's a localized to um, a very small area then it can be treated with just simple excision of that area but if the cervical cancer has spread then you will need to do a more aggressive treatment with radiation and chemotherapy and what's important is these are not you know without their side effects for example radiation can cause premature menopause so it's important to discuss this with the patient before treatment begins and prevention. Prevention is the key in cervical cancer because the pap smears are really how you make sure that this can be prevented. If routine pap smears are done, then you can detect abnormal cells even before they progress to cervical cancer. And the guidelines always seem to be changing, but the most recent or current guidelines as of 2015 are women age 21 to 65 should have a pap smear every three years the exception is if a woman has had a hysterectomy then she does not need one because the cervix has been taken out there is another part of prevention that's important and that is a relatively new vaccine known as the HPV vaccine that can be given and that helps to prevent cervical cancer Let's take a look at a few vignettes. 34-year-old woman presents for evaluation after diagnosis of cervical cancer. On clinical evaluation, it is apparent that the cancer involves the upper one-third of the vagina. There is no parametrial spread. 
After discussion with the patient, she opts for a combination of external beam irradiation and brachytherapy. In preparing for this treatment, you want to discuss the possible side effects, which of the following conditions is a potential side effect of radiotherapy. Well, one of the side effects of radiotherapy is loss of ovarian function and premature menopause. So choice E. Next question. 36-year-old woman presents with two days of generalized malaise and low-grade fever, along with severe dysuria and clear vaginal discharge. She states that she had unprotected intercourse with a new boyfriend six days ago. He denied any history of sexually transmitted disease. She has no significant medical history and takes only multivitamins. On physical exam, the patient appears quite anxious with a temperature of 38.9. On external vaginal exam, small, ulcerative, exquisitely tended, tender, and erythematous lesions are present on the labia, and several similar lesions are apparent on the vagina. Cultures are taken, and a wet mount exam reveals numerous WBCs. The woman is concerned about her risk for cervical cancer. Which of the following statements concerning cervical cancer is correct? Well, let's take a look at these. If she had three consecutive pap smears with normal results, she could have one pap smear every five years. That's not really part of the new guidelines. An epidemiological association with herpes virus and cervical cancer exists. That is true. Pap smears should be performed every six months. Not necessarily the guidelines essentially say every three years for women aged 21 to 65. No association with herpes virus and cervical cancer exists. Well, that's the opposite of B. So the answer to this question is B. A very small percentage of cases involve herpes virus. 59-year-old woman inquires about screening for cervical cancer. Past medical history is significant for menorrhagia, secondary to fibroids. She underwent a total abdominal hysterectomy three years ago. She is married and has two children. Her only medication is atenolol. She does not smoke or drink. In response to a concern about cervical cancer screening, which of the following is most correct? Well, remember, for all women aged 21 to 65, it's recommended every three years to have a pap smear. So the answer should be B, but there's a very important point in the clinical vignette that she had a hysterectomy. So because she had a hysterectomy, she has no cervix anymore. And the guideline for women who've had a hysterectomy is that she does not need a pap smear. So none of these pap smear choices are correct. So by default, you're left with choice D, which is indeed the correct answer. She just needs an annual pelvic exam. And then finally, a 26-year-old woman underwent a pap smear, which revealed low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. There was no inflammation found. She was also found to be HIV negative, and a pap smear two years ago was negative. The most appropriate next step is. Well, basically, whenever you have abnormal cytology on a pap smear, such as this one, it's important to proceed with a colposcopy and a biopsy. And that will, of course, help give you a more important uh, diagnostic information about the nature of the cervical cancer.